In a prior episode, we started down the classic to fluid conversion path. In just a matter of minutes, we were far enough down that path to have something we could release into production. But we did notice a couple of oddities. You might say quirks that I said, hey, let's save those for a future episode. Today, I want to talk about the alignment of the labels, the group box labels, over the top of the data entry fields. Now, you notice on my screen that, for example, the label for the group box for shirt size doesn't line up over the top of the data entry fields. So a lot of students ask me in our fluid class, is it possible to center the label for the shirt group box, for example, over the top of the data entry fields? Now, it's a computer, so the answer is always yes. Another question is, how? Well, fortunately, there's a delivered style class that we could use that would center the label, the group box label, over the top of the group box. It's PSC underscore H align dash center. That's great. But what will it do to the data entry fields? That's a really good question here. I could go into application design here, make the change and show it to you, but let's just look at it visually using the inspector tools here in our web browser. So finding the data entry field itself. So I've highlighted now the next size field and you'll notice that the blue bar there on the screen, well, it takes up the entire width of the group box and the label section there for a data entry field, well, it only consumes about 33%, whereas the data entry segment consumes the remainder of the group box width. Or working our way all the way up to the group box, we can see the label for the group box is left aligned right up against the edge, no padding, no margin, just right up against the edge. And then we can see the data entry fields. Are they centered? No, actually they're not, are they? See, the label is consuming 33%, and then the data entry field is allowed, receives the remainder. Now, in a prior episode, we specifically set the data entry field to be smaller than 100%, 100% because we noted that the data entry field on certain sizes actually was larger than the size of the group box, and it didn't need to be that large anyway. So we reset it to a size that was more appropriate for the data it was storing. So here, what would happen if we applied the style class PSC underscore H align dash center? Well, it would in fact center the group box label, but the data entry fields, which are currently center left, would move center right. So we'd end up with as a group box label centered and the content slightly shifted to the right. Now we might say that the alignment is closer, but I wouldn't say it was better. Could you? So what could you do then to center the content? Well, we could write our own CSS. I love writing CSS, but I don't know that I want to write CSS this time. Why? See, if we write our own CSS to center the content, well, first we're going to have to massage it a little bit to get the fields to line up on the left, but yet still be centered. But here's the other problem that I have with it. We're centering it because we're having an issue of relationship. We don't, we can't visually identify that, hey, the label for this group box goes with this data entry content because the label is so far from the data entry content. So one solution to fix it would be to center it. So it's very visually related. They're centered and aligned together in a column, vertically aligned. But that's based on today's people tools user experience. But here's something I know about the visual appearance of people tools and the user experience. It's going to change. And when it changes, I'll have to go back to those decisions that I made, those user interface design decisions, and rethink them. Now the question is, do I want to do that? Do I want to paint myself into a corner, so to speak, so that I'm forced to revisit my CSS every time we apply a people tools update? I don't think so. I don't want to do that. Okay, here's a question I have. How would Classic have handled that? Now, we could revert the component back to Classic and just take a look. How would Classic handle that? But here, let's just draw this out. Let's whiteboard it. So I'm going to draw on my screen here. I'm going to draw a group box. And our group box, a typical group box, would have a region at the top for the group box label. And then inside you'd have some content. So let's draw a couple of radio buttons with some labels. And I don't know, let's mark the center one as selected. 
Perfect. Okay, now let's put in that group box label where it would have been in classic. Group box label. There, that would be your label. Use something generic. And where would it reside? Right up there in the upper left corner. Actually, just like it does today in the upper left corner. But is it alignment that helps us understand the relationship between the group box label and the data entry fields? No. I think it's the spacing, it's the border around the content. That's what helps us understand the relationship. And I think the problem that we have with this page right now is we don't see any visual boundaries. We go from personal characteristics to shirt to slacks with one solid border. See, when you have a grid with one solid border, we do, we vertically align the labels over the top of the data entry fields. As we see here, they're vertically aligned over the top of the data entry fields. That makes total sense. But this is not a grid. These are group boxes. So what if we were to apply the containing boundaries around the data entry fields instead of using alignment to affix that, what I would say is a relational issue, a relationship issue, the relationship of the group box label to the group box content. What would that look like? And how would you build it? Here, let's do that. Let's go into Application Designer now and build out what that might look like. Now, this is going to require a few extra group boxes, but hey, I'm okay with that. You see, I like to use group boxes for layout and for documentation. As you see here, we have one group box that's used for layout, and we've documented the purpose of that group box in the group box label. Now, we have these other two group boxes. They aren't initially there for layout, but they do have some style classes used for layout. But we can't really tell that by looking at the design page, can we? Because the labels are being used. They're visual. Our users will see them. So I'm going to add a few more group boxes, but to do that, we're going to need some more space on this page. So here, let's, uh, let's go ahead and move a few things around just to give ourselves a little bit more space. And height-wise, to make room for those additional group box headers. And how about down as well? There, I think that'll do it. Okay, great. Now let's start with personal characteristics. Now, right now, personal characteristics is marked as one column in the three column layout. Let's take that column designator, let's move it to an outer group box. And let's label it. And set our group box type to layout only. No visual indication. It's just here for layout purposes, just for connecting a style class. Now I'm going to add one more style class to this. It's PSC underscore padding dash standard. What that's going to do is give us a visual break between each of those group boxes. Instead of a solid line between them, it's going to break. So there's going to be a little bit of space between each of those group boxes. Now why standard? So you and I could use a style class such as PSC underscore padding and then specify a pixel width or a relative unit of measure such as an EM, but I'm choosing standard. What does standard get us? People Tools has a predefined padding size. And by using standard, I'm inheriting that predefined padding size. So if they make changes to their predefined padding in a future release, I will inherit that. That's the kind of CSS I like. Okay, great. So that's our first group box. Now I want to add one more group box and that's going to be for the border around our content. So I'll draw this group box here. And if we like what we see, if we like what we've done, then we'll go ahead and clone these group boxes to the rest, the remainder. There, that looks good. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the fluid tab. Now this one is for our border, so PSC underscore border. And again, instead of a fixed width, size, color, etc., we'll use standard. And what does that get us? Well, a border has a stroke width, a border has a color, and a border has a style. Is it dotted? Is it dashed? Is it a solid line? And by using standard, we're inheriting all of the color, the stroke, and the style from people tools so that our borders will look like all other borders. And we'll use PSC padding dash standard again, so that now we'll get a little bit of space inside. Because one of the things that we noticed was the label for the group box was right up against the corner edges of the group box itself. So by adding some padding, what we're saying is take the content, shift it in a little bit, give us some space so that there's space between the border 
and the content. Padding dash standard and group box type of layout only. Oh, and we want to do one more thing. We want to make sure that we take those style classes and use them for documentation. Since this is a layout only group box, the label will be invisible. So it's great at design time. Helps us out. Helps us understand why are these group boxes here. OK, great. Let's reload. I like that. That looks good. OK, so let's go ahead and update these other group boxes as well. We no longer need to mark these as columns within the three column layout. Instead, these will just take up the size or dimensions of their parent. So let's go ahead and set a new parent. Yeah, that looks good. We want to make sure that we're properly, we want to make sure our containment is proper. In Fluid, layout doesn't matter so much. It's all about containment and order. So we want to make sure that there's a visual containment, no overlapping group boxes, no overlapping data entry fields, very clear containment lines and borders. And we can see here that our group boxes are clearly nested inside of each other. I like that. I like that. Now I did notice one more thing. I have one more idea, one, thing, one more thing we could fix. Notice the spacing here. There's almost no spacing between the word one row and our group boxes above it. So here's one more style class for you. Let's go to the PSC column dash three. And again, instead of a fixed size, like, hey, let's throw, say, five or 10 pixels between them. How about this? How about PSC underscore margin dash standard? That way we're inheriting the standard margin. What is people tools using everywhere else for that margin size? Better, better. Personally, I would like just a little bit more white space, but that's better. I could go into production with this. Let's see, is it responsive? How does it behave responsively? I like that. I like that. That looks good. Very clear visual breaks between the different group boxes. Very clear relationship between the group box label and the data entry field. You know, we share people tools tips like this every week in our people tools classes. And we'd love to have you in a future class. Check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or here's an idea. Give us a call and let us help you develop a training plan. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.